explosiveness, in this video we'll discuss geodesic or Riemann normal coordinates. So for given coordinates on a manifold, x1 through xn on a manifold, again we're assuming a single chart here, then consider new coordinates And here's how I'm going to find these new coordinates. I'm going to say that x i tilde is x i plus gamma i m n x m x n. And then I need a one half here to do it times one half. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to evaluate this Christoffel symbol. I'm going to evaluate that. I'm going to consider this equation where the Christoffel symbol is evaluated at the origin, at the point zero, right? In other words, I'm centering my coordinate system at the origin, right? So our coordinates are centered, coordinates centered at zero. They don't have to be. If, you, if, you, if they're not centered at the origin, what you have to do is you have to subtract off a P0 over here, a P0 over here, and a P0 over here. So you have to subtract off P0i, P0m, P0n. It's just a little bit, it's just too messy. Just do it at the origin, right? And I'm just gonna, if, the, if that's where the origin is, I'm just gonna shift my manifold over so that the point P is the origin, right? So it's just, a linear transformation is not gonna change my coordinates at all. So this the important fact is that this Christoffel symbol is evaluated at the origin here, okay? All right, excellent. And so now what I want to do is I want to differentiate these equations with respect to xj. So that's the first phase of this. And so these coordinates, these new coordinates over here, these xi coordinates, are called geodesic coordinates. And we'll explain why in a second. So x tilde 1 through x tilde n are called geodesic or normal coordinates. And these are very powerful coordinates to use. You're basically just following the flow, right? Of the GDS. You're following the geodesic flow. Okay. And so let me do the derivative with respect to xj. So that would say partial xi, partial xj. If I do an xj derivative of xi, I get delta ij plus, and then I'm going to have two of these things over here. So let's do it slowly, right? I have a one half, this constant over here, i, m, n, and then zero, I value the point zero. And then if I do the x uh, j derivative of xm, I get a delta mj xn plus a delta nj xm, like so, by, different, by the product rule. And of course, both these things will replace this m with a j, and this will replace the n with a j, but it's symmetric, so I can just keep one of the variables over here, so I have two of the same thing. So this is going to be a delta ij, and then plus gamma i uh, Let's just keep, uh, I can keep the J over here. I'll keep the N, XN, like so, okay? Now, what does the, what's the useful part of this, trans, of this result over here? The useful part of the result is this says that at the origin, so this says that partial XI tilde, partial XJ, this matrix over here, evaluate the origin, its determinant is going to be the same thing as the, if I plug in zero over here, that's gone. It's just going to be equal to one, so it's not equal to zero, right? So in other words, this transformation is a legitimate transformation coordinates, right? So this is a valid trans a coordinate change. This is a valid coordinate change. Excellent. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to multiply this whole expression by... Now I'm going to do a differentiation again. So I'm going to hit both sides of this equation with partial xj, partial xk, right? So we're going to do that next. So next we're going to hit this expression over here with a, um, let's do it like this, partial xj, partial xj, partial x tilde k, partial x tilde i, partial xj is equal to partial xj, partial x tilde k, delta i j, and then I have a plus, of course that gamma is about the origin, right? Plus partial x j, partial x tilde k, and then gamma i j n at the origin, x to the n, okay? So if I do, formally do that. Now what's the key feature over here? I've done this in such a way that this, so one other important feature to tell, say about this relationship over here is not only is this expression over here true, it gives me the relationship that if I look at partial x tilde i, partial x j at the origin at zero, it's really what? It's really delta ij. 
delta ij. That's more important than the determinant relationship, okay? So that's one fact we have over here. Okay, now this is gonna turn into what? This is gonna turn into delta ik over here, so delta ik is gonna be equal to what? I'm gonna replace this j with, the, with an i, that's partial x i, partial x tilde k, and then plus partial x j, partial x tilde k, gamma i j n at the origin, x to the n, okay? Now, if I plug in zero to this relationship, what does this tell me? This relationship tells me that partial x i, partial x tilde k, at the origin, of course, right? I'll move all this to the point of the origin, which I'm gonna call the pole of this problem, right? At the origin, is equal to what? Is equal to delta i k. So I get the secondary relationship over here, okay, beautiful which in some sense is saying that at the origin, this is behaving like the ordinary sort of flat Euclidean space. In some sense, this what this coordinate transformation is doing is it's taking any sort of curvature at that at the point zero and locally just flattening it out there, right? So I'm, I'm basically just pushing down the curvature to be zero at that point, right? That's essentially what these no normal coordinates are doing. Okay, wait. All right, and so now the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this equation over here and I'm gonna differentiate with respect to h. I need a new variable. Um, partial x h, right? So I have delta i k, and then if I do a partial with respect to h, it's gonna be gone, right? So if I do a partial derivative of the delta function, I get nothing. It's gonna be partial squared x i, partial x tilde k, partial x tilde h, plus I can do derivative of this thing first, partial squared x j, partial x tilde k, partial x tilde h, gamma i j n at the origin, x to the n. And then I'm gonna have a plus over here, plus partial x uh, j, partial x tilde k, gamma i j n zero, like that. And then partial x n, partial x n, partial x tilde h, like that, okay? All right, so now let's figure out what the second derivative is at the origin, right? So the second derivative at the origin is gonna be what? So I plug in the origin to this, what's gonna happen over here? If I plug in the origin, this term is gonna be gone. This term is gonna be what? This term is gonna be a delta jk. This term is gonna be a delta nh, and that's just gonna be the Christoffel symbol. So this tells me that partial squared, just if I isolate that, if I throw that on the other side of the equation, this says that partial squared xi, xi, partial x, tilde k, partial x tilde h at the origin. At the origin, this is gone. It's gonna be the negative of this thing, so it's gonna be a negative, negative delta jk, and then a delta nh, nh, and then a gamma i j n at the origin, okay? So let's simplify this, and what are we going to get? So the j's are going to turn into k's. So this is going to be a negative gamma i. The, k the j turns into a k, and then the n turns into an h at the origin. Beautiful. Okay, so I have that relationship for what the second derivative is at the origin. Now, at this point, we're going to show that the Christoffel symbols in these new coordinates vanishes at the origin. That's my next objective. So let's do it. So let's recall what the transformation laws for Christoffel symbols. So recall, if I have gamma, uh, let's do an M, N, L tilde is gamma of what? Let's say A, b, c, and then partial x tilde l, partial x c, partial x a, partial x tilde m, partial x, uh, what, b, partial x tilde n. Okay, good. And then the, the, the non-tensorial terms, we have a partial x tilde l, partial x, let's call it a, partial squared x a, partial x tilde m, partial x tilde n. That's the transformation law for the Christoffel symbols. So let's figure out what the Christoffel symbols are in this new coordinate frame over here. So if I looked at gamma tilde, gamma tilde, and my tilde coordinates of l, 
M and then N at the origin, what it will be is it will be gamma of A of C A B at the origin, and then partial X L partial C at the origin. We found out what that is, right? That's delta L C, okay? And then this is going to be a delta A M. And this is going to be a delta B B N, like that. And then this is going to be what? The origin. So then, of course, that's at the origin, right? Good. And this is going to be what? And this is going to be a plus delta L A. And then what's the second derivative over here? So let's figure out what this is over here. So let's use this formula over here. If I have partial squared xi, partial xk, partial xh at zero, I get this number over here. So what will this be? So this is going to be the negative, the negative of gamma of what? Negative gamma. So my i goes up here, so my a goes up top. A goes up top like that. And then what? And then uh, we have a k and h, those go in the bottom. So the m and the n go in the bottom here. So I'm going to have a, so it's my, uh, so let's see, so uh, I have an m and an n. Right, so those go in the bottom over here. So my, I have my A and B, those are gonna go in the bottom. Make sure I'm doing this correctly. Uh, that's correct, good. XL, perfect, okay, good. Just wanna make sure all the terms are correct. And then over here, we're gonna have the, um, let's see, I had the M and the N, right? M and then the N, like that at the origin, right, using this formula over here. So my i is a, my m and n are h and k. Perfect. Okay? Now let's tell what these things are. So if I fill this in, what are we going to get over here? So my c turns into an l. So this is going to be a l. My a turns into an m. My b turns into an n at the origin. And over here, my a is going to turn into an l, right? So that's minus gamma of l, m, n of zero, and look at that, beautiful. This is equal to zero, right? So in other words, the Christoffel symbols of the origin with respect to this new coordinate system is zero. So I'm able to find a new set of coordinates with the Christoffel symbols vanished at zero. And so in this problem, zero is called the pole. So zero, the origin, is called the pole. Okay. And what this calculation, this normal form, or this GDS of coordinate allows me to do is this allows me to choose coordinates at a point where I'm doing calculation so the Christoffel symbols vanish at that point. And, it's and if you can show that that point, is, if, if that point was arbitrary in some sense, if that point is arbitrary, then you have a relationship that, is, that holds for an arbitrary number of points around a certain point, and so that result will hold in general. right? And so we're using the fact that on a local chart, if I can get the Christoffel symbols to vanish at a point and that point was arbitrary in the chart, then I can do that calculation exclusively in normal coordinates this where the geodesic components vanish, and we'll see that this technique is very useful in proving differential relationships with the covariant derivative. In particular, it's extremely useful when you're proving the differential Bianchi identities, and you're also showing that the, uh, the Einstein tensor has a zero covariant derivative, so that in other words, so that actually you can, that it sort of fits the bill for the Einstein field equations. And so we'll see that this is a very, very powerful, this, these coordinates are a very powerful mechanism for proving very, very complex uh, covariant derivative identities in a very simple cover in a very simple framework it basically reduces to ordinary partial derivatives. So we're going to see that in further videos. Thank you very much.